Hello everyone, and welcome. I'm excited to share with you the key findings from my community needs assessment, as well as my program recommendations based on current research and findings from the focus group I conducted. Let's get started. My name is John McCullough. I graduated from the University of Maine of Farmington with a Bachelor of Science degree in community health with a school health concentration. For the past six years, I've been in public education teaching health at Gray New Gloucester High School. Currently, I'm a graduate student at the University of New England in the Applied Nutrition Program. As a health teacher at Gray New Gloucester High School, I try to cover as many aspects of health as I can in the short amount of time I have with the students. The final project during our nutrition unit, in a nutshell, is for students to track everything they eat and drink for three days and write a reflection. While we were working on this assignment in class, I was talking with a young man about the school food in his nutrition log and its nutrient breakdown. We were both a little shocked at first about how unhealthy the food was overall. As we talked, more students in the room began to contribute to the conversation. Soon it was a torrent of complaints about how students don't always get food if they're in the second half of the line at lunchtime, and there were many other complaints besides. When I questioned the students in my other classes, it was the same story. Not enough quality food and no nutrition education or promotion outside of my own class. This made me consider the rising obesity rates in the United States currently at 17% for adolescents and the possible association with school food and nutrition policy. That is when I decided that adolescents aged 14 to 18 in Cumberland County, Maine would be the target population for this community needs assessment. There are numerous medical consequences related to adolescent obesity, such as type two diabetes, asthma, cardiovascular disease, menstrual abnormalities, impaired balance and orthopedic problems, just to name a few. This used to only be an issue that affected adults, but as time goes on and it's becoming more prevalent with children and adolescents. School policy around nutrition can improve, maintain, or increase disparities in adolescent obesity. Studies have shown that there are healthier overall school food environments when assessed on competitive food policies, school meals, and other healthy food practices. Students spend at least 175 days in school for instruction. Schools across the country follow the policies set forth by the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, and while this act has had positive effects in the school districts, adherence is not 100%, and schools may choose which aspects to follow and which aspects to adjust. For example, the act says schools should have a wellness coordinator, but the role of this position is not specified. Finally, fast food consumption has been linked with obesity across all age groups. Fast food is both convenient and inexpensive. Families consuming fast food is an ever-increasing tendency, especially for families with two parents that are working outside the home. The food that is served at fast food restaurants is higher in calories with low nutritional value. A study conducted on adolescents in Bangladesh saw that 64% of their participants consume fast food frequently. It is also found a significant association of fast food consumption with higher prevalence of obesity. The researchers believed that the only way to control the epidemic was to limit fast food consumption and change the food market's availability of healthy foods. They concluded that it would take the combined effort of families, schools, and government to make a difference. A focus group of adolescents between the ages of 14 and 18 was conducted at Gray New Gloucester High School in Cumberland County, Maine. They were comprised of students in this school. The questions for the focus group were developed to be like a pre-assessment students would take before starting a new unit. This would make students feel more comfortable in this setting and hopefully produce more honest and thoughtful answers. There are four key findings that resulted from both the focus group and the relevant literature. All the participants agreed that there is a serious lack of nutrition education in their district. Throughout the session, the students were given varying statistics for obesity rates in Maine and Cumberland County. There was a knowledge gap about how obesity rates are rising in each age group. When presented with the information, the participants said that they would be more likely to see information like that if it was more present on social media. One student said, no one really reads the paper anymore. It was implied that participants think that is the only place where information can be found. In addition, participants believe that if they had more consistent education in school throughout the earlier years of education, it would help them make better decisions about their health later in life. When asked about the district school nutrition policy, participants had varying responses, 
none of which related to the policy. Upon receiving the policy and having a few moments to look it over, participants either did not recognize it or thought that the school was not following it correctly. They did recognize what types of food should be served at each meal, though. Uh, fruits, vegetables, protein, milk, etc. The only insight students can glean from the nutrition policy at their high school after receiving a copy of that policy was that follow through was lacking in almost every area. They suspected that it was due to lack of funding for nutrition and nutrition education within the district. While they did have food available to them at each lunch, the quality of the food was frequently in question. Participants had varying accounts of the poor food quality. The highlights include soggy or stale fries, expired fruit, gravy smelling like cigarettes, and next to no local options. When the school menu was presented to students, they were upset at the lack of variety. It was the same food that was served on a looping cycle. Also, portion sizes were consistently addressed. They listed several consequences they've experienced as a result of not having enough food during the school day. Students are not able to focus in class because of their hunger. There's not enough food to sustain them, especially if they have after-school activities, and in some cases causes them to eat unhealthy snacks when they get home. Fast food consumers are three times more likely to be obese compared to non-fast food consumers. A study conducted in 2021 included adolescents from 68 countries to understand if there was a relationship between food insecurity and fast food consumption. The prevalence for fast food consumption increases with the severity of the food insecurity. A few participants in the focus group mentioned the number of fast food restaurants in the area. It varied from student to student on how much fast food was consumed, but there was only one student that said they do not eat fast food at all. For some, circumstances dictated the amount of fast food they ate, whether it's because they work at a fast food restaurant and is the only food available to them during their shift, or they eat after away games, or it is one of the only options for eating out in gray. In any case, the participants all agreed that the obesity rate is affected by fast food consumption. Through this assessment, three recommendations were identified. Creating a school wellness committee, revamping nutrition education and promotion, and partnering with local kitchens throughout Cumberland County. In addition, working with Maine Health's Let's Go program. This is a community engagement initiative that has a history of working with schools to promote policy and environmental change that facilitates healthy eating and active living through evidence-based strategies. The infrastructure provided by this program would relieve some of the burden on the school districts. This organization is adept at partnering with local resources within a community to increase the health of students. As a bonus, Maine Health's Let's Go program has a logic model that will help them and the schools they work with evaluate the program. Cumberland County Schools will have a school wellness committee that is comprised of students, teachers, and administrators. The role of the students will be to report on their experience with nutrition services at the school and provide feedback. Teachers and administrators will offer suggestions to the school board on policy and evaluate population of their schools through an individualized self-reported questionnaire based off the stages of change model. This questionnaire will track where each individual is at in the county's plan for healthier students. In short, it will determine if students are unwilling to make a healthy lifestyle change, if they are planning to make a change, or if they are maintaining a healthy change. Additionally, it will help stakeholders understand why 51.7% of obese adolescents aren't trying to lose weight. With assistance and resources from Maine Health's Let's Go program, each school will integrate nutrition education into every classroom subject, including math, science, social studies, English, physical education, and so on. Students will receive a consistent message from each of their classes based on the latest dietary guidelines for Americans. In addition, each part of the school building will include positive nutrition messages, such as the benefits of healthy eating or recommended recipes from the staff. There will be no advertisements for unhealthy food or beverages. Staff will also be encouraged to model healthy eating and parents will be encouraged to only send healthy snacks to school. The students at Greeny Gloucester High School want more local food on the menu. Whenever the school provided apples from the local orchard, the students could not get enough. In Palestine, they created an intervention called Healthy Kids, Healthy Children. The schools partnered with these 
kitchens and standardized healthy food that was to be served to children in schools at a cheap price. A similar program will be initiated at Cumberland County Schools to increase the amount of local food that will provide healthier options for adolescents and create a strong community and school relationship. Thank you so much for your time. Here are my references.